Uh, so we're in our new location starting here. Oh, I have the Nike switch, not because I support Nike, but you know, Courageous Kaepernick, you know, is getting paid, you know, is a little sustaining his money. You know, he gives his money away anyway, so it's all right. Plus, it's always interesting to me, um, you know, if the corporations fight the corporations or if the entities, you know, the big boys fight the big boys. And, you know, Kaepernick and us, we're just little guys. So, you know, if he can get some money, I don't, I don't care. I don't care what, if, you know, whatever. Of course, they, they cleaned up the messages and stuff like that. He's not talking about police brutality in the ad, but it's an ad from the corporation. You don't expect them. Okay, forget that stuff. That's not what we're talking about. <sighs> um, I'm going to talk about Bill Cosby, but I'm going to do this in a different way. In the, uh, in the 80s, I spent... Um, I'm gonna spend, uh, I first was exposed to um, 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 numerology uh, through the great Lloyd Strayhorn, uh, his book uh, Numbers in You. Um, and uh, and uh, just real briefly on that, you know, each number has a vibration, like one is like, think of it as a number, like everybody wants to be number one, you know, two is like couples, three is like a, um, loqu loquacious and autistic, you know, uh, four is an unusual, five is uh, excess, uh, six is um, uh, education, seven is uh, spiritual, eight is um, prosperity, and nine is complete, is everything. <clears throat> so now Bill Cosby is going on there, I believe it's the 12th of July, so he's a three. He's a cancer three, don't worry about the cancer part, three. Which basically uh, means, um, uh, because I'm a three too, I'm a cancer three too, um, which basically means that he is very concerned with his reputation, with his reputation. Okay. Also, it's artistic, uh, and uh, threes also can. They're like all, all. They, they're up all kinds of hours. You know, I mean, they, they make good air traffic controls. Let's put it that way. Um, and they're artistic, like I said. So anyway, so that's that's Bill Cosby. But another thing I learned about numerology is like one is usually a, a, a male uh, thing, and two is a female. Uh, female vibration. These are all indications. That doesn't mean I don't want to get into this stuff. Man. You can study numerology. I want to get to the Bill Cosby report. But what's interesting is that if you know that uh, no, the 1800s, eight and one is nine, so that's a male sort of um, you know vibration. In the 1900s, uh, nine and one is ten. That's so it's still a male vibration. So for at least what uh, 200 whatever years up until now, it's been like um, male you know, male vibration, intense, more intense. And of course, you don't have to, from the one, you know, one all the way to, anyway, when we was coming up to the year 2000, and that's, that's like a shift. So, so it means like, it's a female vibration, you see? So it sort of takes time to catch up. So now we're in, we're in full female vibration mode. I won't get into that right now, but I just wanted to let you know that for sort of basic thing. Okay, let's get on to, uh, to Bill Cosby. Now this, Thing, there are three things involved. Well, I, I consider there's three judgments involved. There's the um, popular or the people judgment, you know. There's the um, law, which is totally different than the people judgment, the law. And then there's what I call karma. Okay. Bills, Cosby, whatever the people think, think what you want, guilty, not guilty, whatever it is, you, you know, that's opinion or whatever have you. The law works as the law works, and then there's a contest between the, the, the defendant's lawyers and the prosecutor and the, and the, and the judge, whatever, there's a lot of factors, but the law is in there. Then there's karmic justice, okay? I want to talk about karmic justice. Now, people think that Bill Cosby, um, you know, uh, well, not say part of the people justice is a lot of people are talking about um, Bill Cosby, you know, he wanted to buy NBC and they, they're after him or whatever have you. Okay, I'm not going to argue that. Fine. If you believe that, that's all right. That's all right. That's right. But really, what exposed him, now, he's been doing this for years. And when the comedian Harold, Harold Burris was in Philadelphia doing a, a, a joke, doing his set, let's put it that way, but you, when you come to a town, you talk about the famous people. So, you know, if, 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 uh, if I'm going to, um, right down the road in, 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 um, in, in King Williamstown, uh, Grinsburg, there's, a, there's, there's where Steve Pico's grave is, and, and that's where Steve Pico is. So if I'm in this area, I'm, gonna, um, I'm a comedian, I'm going to say something about Steve Pico. You know, you know, you know what I'm saying? So Bill Cosby, of course, everybody knows that's his town. Philadelphia is where Bill Cosby is from. So Hannibal Burst was there and talked about Bill Cosby. You know, unfortunately for Bill, this is an age of like cell phones, whatever. So that, what he said, went viral. People have been saying that a lot of times. All to, a lot of people knew what the deal was. Okay, fine. So that's one then. 
but here's here's the here's the thing. What real and the reason why he what he said to Bill Cosby, what he was saying about Bill Cosby, he said, you know, you old man, you are saying all this crazy stuff to him about the pound was called a, properly known as the pound cake speech. You know, you need just to sit down. You know, that's basically what he, what he was saying. Why was he saying that? Well, because of this, Bill Cosby and that whole, that whole generation um, is out of touch with this. Or, or let us put it this way, they they know what they know. And, and unlike a lot of things, they, they don't necessarily um, um, update their knowledge. <laughs> Let's put it that way. So, for instance, Bill Cosby, uh, basically the early 50s, he's born, raised in the 50s in the projects, right? He gets out of the projects, and in the early 60s, he becomes he comes on the, he comes on the scene as a comedian, whatever have you. But in that time period, remember, he's a project, but he's a different kind of projects kid because most of the projects kids now, as they, they work their magic, the, the powers that be worked their magic in the in the in the late 60s and the 70s and got all the men out of those out of out, broke broke up the family, you know, with that. Uh, um, I'll get into some other some other commentary. I'm going to talk about that. The, 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 the senator from New York who, who made his reputation on, on on black people and whatever we could say some other time. So he grew up in the, in the era in the projects in Philadelphia, but he had a mother and a father, a working mother, or rather a working father and a mother, right? So he had a contained family unit. And as he was going out, now there's a thing uh, in the black community, and I think they call it boule now, whatever. But these are the so-called upper crust, upper crust, upper crust. I like to say crust because it is a crust. The upper crust of the black uh, experience. I'm, I'm talking pre-1970, before all these other people who claimed they who, who came to America as black people. You know, like all the all the Caribbeans and Africans and, and whatever whoever else is coming trying to be black. Well, there's a the upper crust the boule. Uh, they they have they had a thing we call them the, um, the Jack and Jill clubs. The Jack and Jill people, right? And Camille uh, Cosby, his wife, was it was of that class. So when Bill was wooing her, with her, her people weren't having it. It's like it's, because there's a thing in the black community. So we, we used to do it's like a, who are your people? You know, they, they want to know who are your people. So you know, basically your your, your lineage as far as you can go. You know, where 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 you are. Um, this is very, uh, uh, very interesting because um, just to get off topic for just a second, when when John Lewis, uh, he did a dog whistle when when he when he, he um, uh, during the, the primaries of Hillary Clinton against um, um, Bernie Sanders, he said he didn't have to say, it, but he said it this way. He said, "We don't know Bernie Sanders." We know Hillary. Basically, what what he's saying is that that's a, 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 a thing like look, we don't know nothing about this guy. We got to go who we know who, with who we know. That's that's with this whole thing of who your people are, who you know, whatever, and, and your your networking, whatever have you. Who's whatever. Okay. So Bill Cosby woos Camille, wins her over, gets a little success. Then basically from 60, 1962 really on to at least 6266. He's getting a lot of, you know, he's like, because they only let a few, few, a few black people through at a time, you know, as far as uh, entertainment and stuff like that go. Well, sports a little bit different because it's more of a meritocracy, but there's all, also politics involved with that. Okay, so now basically he's not been in the projects since I don't know, since '62 or but before that. You know what I mean? So he doesn't know that reality. And all the time in the '60s and the '70s, here's where I really come down, especially in the, in the early '70s. Let's go to the pound cases. When was basically this part of speech was that you know, pull your pants up. Well, how did the pants? How did that fashion start? Well, there was three um, congressional dis three districts in Brooklyn, right? That the, the 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 police they would prey on and take these kids and and send them upstate, um, you know, upstate New York to to, to jail. You know? Um, this came after what's called the Rockefeller Laws. Uh, the Rockefeller Laws, but in a little napkin, he wrote this thing out uh, about you know making it, if you're under if you're under 18, you was going to jail. But if you're, under, if you're over 18, you're going to jail for a long, long time for some for for marijuana, any sort of drug possession. You know, marijuana is one of those things, and we won't get into the whole thing about marijuana and how that was a racist thing. That's a whole other story. Um, so that's early seven. Now Bill Cosby, you know, who was a by then, in the early 70s, when these laws was being written, you know, he was, should have been politically self you know, enough, enough uh, um, political um, 
uh, acumen and you know uh, knowledge to know this is going to be bad. He and or he he certainly connected to all those those all those politicians and preachers and and entertainers. Where they all know each other. You know, this, this is still a small club in the early '70s. They still were they were going out, but they were still you know doing doing know each other. And so, I I I, I guess what I want to say is. So what happens in that in that in that situation is these kids uh, who are now uh, subject to the, to the Rockefeller laws, which which Bill Cosby and those politicians couldn't prevent, not seeing what the, what the impact of the black community was, right? They go up to jail. And when they do in jail, what they took what took away they, they take away their their uh, laces and their thing. They take away their belts. So they their pants starts drooping, you know, so they walk around that. This is before the whole thing about, oh, that means it's a homosexual thing in jail. But just leave that. This is how it starts, right? Now, when these kids get out and they go back to these neighborhoods in Brooklyn, this little enclave, now we're talking, now we're talking about the late 70s, right? It becomes a fashion. At the same time, hip hop is, is percolating in the, in the South Bronx and, and going to Brooklyn in the late 70s. So by the time the 80s hits, it becomes a full-grown fashion where it's hooked up, on, you know, not early hip-hop, but, you know, later on in the 80s, this whole phenomenon just really becomes a fashion thing. Now, there's a thing, if you don't know it, that even these people in Paris, they look at the street fashions of... Of, of, of the black kids, right? And then they make it like two or three years later, they make that high fashion, all of a sudden, everybody's all, ah, da, 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 da. So he could, he, well, let me put it this way. Now, remember, Bill Cosby is also in that era running around because there's a lot of drugs and stuff like that running around before they make this 80s, or now we get into the 80s, but with the crack, and, but they've been doing cocaine and heroin way before then. So what, what, what happens, um, uh, 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 then is all these folks are just you know this is right after the sexual revolution so they all boinking whatever they're doing and then taking advantage of whatever they're doing powerful men they first they did the first wave of money whatever it is I mean you have a situation where um, uh, Bill Cosby's friends would say Miles Davis you know no, I don't want to say anything against Miles. No, wait, but Miles beat up on Cicely Tyson. You know what I mean? So nobody was saying anything about Miles and Cicely Tyson. He didn't stop his friend, you know, Miles from beating up on Cicely Tyson and say, hey, blah, blah, maybe he did. Maybe he did say something, but I don't know, you know? So there's this thing. So he so he becomes this moral, then then becomes America's dad. So now he has to feel he has to da-da-da-da. Now, after he leaves from America's dad and, and Jell-O putting it and, and coking it and all the rest of them, well, both coke brown leaving all that stuff alone. He's, uh, he just, like like a lot of these, I'm, I'm sitting in Africa right now, like a lot of African people, they just don't want to leave the scene. Now, in, in, admittedly, in entertainment, you don't leave the scene. But when he may get there and then try to talk about, a, about other black people, which he no longer was, he no longer is in contact with those with that circumstance, with those project circumstances. He's living wherever he's living and, and he's networking with a whole bunch of other people. These, these bubbles that these celebrities and people get into, they don't, they just don't think the same way. They, they, they lose whatever, and then they make moral judgments. I mean, uh, the comment I made, well, I think Jay Smooth put out a thing, the comment I made is like, oh, you know, when you're on your high horse, oh, the mighty have fallen. But the real thing is like, this is, let's call it karmic justice. I'm looking into. I'm not doing the justice thing, and I told him whatever the people think. This is karmic justice, because at the same time, he's talking uh, moral, just like these preachers. They talk moral stuff, but but they're doing immoral things. You, you, you understand? So that is the problem. So his judgment, no matter what happens with him, I mean, he can get out tomorrow. It doesn't matter. Karma has bit him. I mean, I don't want to in this age of women. Where I don't want to say, it, but but karma is a female dog in heat. Okay, so. Bill Cosby, the problem is, karma and cattle caught up to you. What goes around comes around, you know. And 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 the really weird thing is that you know. Remember, I don't want. Okay, this is going to throw us all off course. But you know, a lot of these folks are into colorism. Remember, um, Camille is light skin, whatever. You know, if you look at his uh, set for, for, for theater, well, if you look at the situation, it was most of these women that he abused or, or white women, whatever it is, I'm not saying there was no black women in there. And uh, he in one case where, well, anyway, the point is, um, it's, it's karma. 
you can at some particular point you just need to sit down a lot of these old people need to sit down I mean one of the funniest thing I ever heard I mean that ever happens when when Bill Clinton got in trouble with his Monica Lewinsky thing whatever have you you know who his spiritual advisor he made his spiritual advisor Jesse Jackson and you know Jesse Jackson was boinking all those people you know what I mean they were seducing but 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 as far as as putting pills or whatever they were doing or or um, I don't know why that's just their world they were living in and then for them to, to for them to take and try to impose themselves on another world trying to correct another world while their world remains tainted is just it's just not just so there you have it Bill I mean you know I've never been to jail my brother died in jail but I've, I've never been locked up or anything like that um, it's a rough thing isolation and uh, yeah, you're going to go through a rough time, but you know, like I said, karma is a female dog in heat. That's all I have to say. <laughs> Me being a T from the Patterson's taking the train to Tibet, letting you know what I only suspect.